a center of excellence, a nurturing space for innovation, creativity, and academic freedom. This is the University of the Philippines, Los Banos. As a constituent university of the University of the Philippines system, UPLB is a leading national higher education and research institution in various niche areas. Grounding itself on the needs of national development, UPLB cultivates well-rounded and critical leaders who are ready to lead breakthroughs and innovations. Through its industrial and academic partnerships, UPLB propagates its gains to advance inclusive development in various sectors. educational institution that upholds honor, excellence, and public service. of sugarcane varieties with high productivity and resistance to Fiji and mosaic disease. In the 1920s, the importance of agriculture was intensified and UPCA was recognized as neighboring countries began sending their students to Los Baños because of the high quality of education. In the 1930s, breeds with superior characteristics such as the Burke Halapig, Los Banos Cantonese chicken, and filament cattle were developed. The 1960s was a fruitful decade for research. Makapuno, a coconut cultivar often made into a dessert, was pioneered and perfected. Meanwhile, the Dairy Training and Research Institute was the first in the country to freeze buffalo semen, paving the way for artificial insemination of local carabaos. Along with the establishment of UPLB in the 70s, the college received the prestigious Ramon Magsaysay Award for International Understanding, Asia's counterpart for the Nobel Peace Prize. In the same decade, the C4 plants were developed the soil test kits were produced in support of the Masagana 99 program and the mango induction technique was introduced. Continuing the production of quality research outputs in the 1980s, techniques to minimize post-harvest losses, the accelerated fish sauce manufacturing process, and the rapid test kit for the detection of pesticide residue on vegetables were developed. The 
1990s saw many new varieties across species or crop types, including Sinta Papaya, the first Philippine bred hybrid, UPLB Gold, a Dorian variety, and Doña Amelita, a Musaenda named after the wife of former President Fidel Ramos. The award-winning National Corn-Based Farmer Scientist RDE Training Program, or FSTP, was also established around this time and still remains as one of the university's primary extension programs. In the field of instruction, the book titled Integrating Sustainable Agriculture in the BSA Curriculum, the UPLB College of Agriculture Experience, was published in 1999. At present, the College of Agriculture and Food Science, or CAPS, continues to be the premier institution of higher learning in agriculture and food science and remains committed to nation building through its instruction, research, and extension programs. In order to produce the best graduates, all of our courses are outcomes-based education and continuous improvement of the curriculum is being practiced to meet the challenges of the 21st century. As testament of excellence, CAPS is constantly recognized by different organizations. In research, we continue to implement relevant studies with focus on the 12 priority commodities to address food security. Moreover, technologies are constantly developed to aid in responsible food production. Supplementing these are extension activities to disseminate the knowledge generated to improve food productivity and livelihood of the people. We believe that present technologies will future-proof our food systems. Some of our notable developments are iDetect, Coraginam, Plant Health and Pest Clinic, Pest Management Tools and Techniques, Smarter Pest Identification Technology or Speedtech, Snap Hydroponics, Drone Technology, Rapid Immunifilter Assay for Virus Indexing, Nano Fertilizers Fertigrow, Formagrow, Nano Biosensors, and Biochar. We at the College of Agriculture and Food Science will continue to promote and nurture a culture with innovative yet conscientious minds and cutting edge skills to lead and serve the country and the region. We are one college with one goal towards sustainable food systems. the Philippines, where agriculture is a major source of livelihood and agricultural crops are staple food for the Filipinos, protecting crops is of great importance. Hence, in 1976, the Philippine government established the National Crop Protection Center under the College of Agriculture and Food Science of UP Los Baños. NCBC stands as a primary institution for research, development, and extension to promote the country's food security and agricultural sustainability through effective pest management programs. The center houses laboratories dedicated to finding sustainable crop protection solutions. CBC researchers conduct surveillance and monitoring of possible pest outbreaks, undertake diagnosis and identification of crop pests, carry out pesticide residue analysis and impact assessments, and develop appropriate pest management technologies. Over the years, 
the center has developed a number of technologies used in the management of crop pests in the country. Beyond the laboratories, NCPC offers technical advice and information through seminars, trainings, refresher courses, and quick response initiatives so farmers and agricultural practitioners can learn about appropriate pest management strategies and make informed decisions about their crops. The center regularly works together with government and private organizations, including the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations and the Center for Agriculture and Bioscience International. It also formulates science-based recommendations for government policymakers. NCBC offers internship opportunities for students who want to immerse themselves in crop protection through laboratory and fieldwork and with the guidance of NCBC experts. A center dedicated to protecting crops, empowering farmers, and forwarding food security and agricultural sustainability. A very pleasant morning to everyone. Welcome to the webinar on the management of sugarcane diseases. Ito po ay handog sa inyo ng National Crop Protection Center ng College of Agriculture and Food Science, UP Los Baños. Ako po si Charlotte Hagosos from NCPC at ako po ang inyong magiging host for today. So last month, tayo po ay nagkaroon ng webinar kung saan tinalakay natin ang mga peste sa palay at kung paano ang mga ito pamamahalaan. Ngayon naman, we are shifting our focus to the management of diseases in sugarcane. So we are conducting this via Zoom, but we are also live streaming this webinar on Facebook and YouTube. Kaya naman, 
kung may mga kakilala po kayo, mga kamag-anak, kaibigan, office mates na nais dumalo sa ating webinar, feel free to direct them to the NCPC Facebook page and YouTube channel. Sa so, gayon ay sama-sama po tayong matututo ngayong umaga. But before we start, uh, some house rules po. Ano? For our participants here on Zoom, your microphones are muted by default. Uh, we are also requesting our panelists to keep their microphones on mute unless they are called upon to speak. This way, mapapanatili po natin na smooth ang flow ng ating webinar. Kung kayo naman po ay may mga questions for our speakers, pwede po kayo magtanong through the Q&A tab dito sa Zoom o kaya naman sa pamamagitan ng comment section sa Facebook or YouTube. So later, we'll be having the open forum kung saan tatalakayin natin ang inyong mga katanungan. And lastly, kung uh, nais niyo pong makatanggap ng certificate of attendance, mangyari lamang po na sagutan ang ating evaluation form. Ito po ay magsisilbing attendance ninyo for this webinar. And we'll, we'll be providing the link to the evaluation form at the end of the program. Ngayon po, to officially begin our Webinar for today, akin pong tinatawagan upang magbigay ng panimulang pananalita ang Director ng National Crop Protection Center, Dr. Barbara L. Kawit. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the NCPC webinar on the management of sugarcane diseases. I am delighted that today we have with us two of NCPC's in-house plant pathologists who will serve as resource speakers, Ms. Mary Joy Lapitan and Dr. Marita Piniri. We also have our dedicated NCPC webinar team, and of course, our attendees joining us via Zoom, Facebook, and YouTube. The presence of each one of you truly enriches this webinar. As a 70 billion peso industry, the sugarcane industry is undoubtedly economically important in our country. More so because we have more than 60,000 Filipino sugarcane farmers. However, the productivity of this industry is constantly being challenged by factors such as climate change, soaring cost of farm inputs, and pest and disease infestations. These challenges weigh heavily on the shoulders of our farmers. So for today, we will be delving into the different sugarcane diseases caused by nematodes, bacteria, fungi, and viruses. We will be learning how to identify these diseases and how to manage them. We are fortunate to have two of our valued NCPC researchers discuss their knowledge and insights about this topic. We hope that through this webinar, all of us will have a better understanding of the sugarcane industry and the challenges it faces. Moreover, we hope that this will empower our stakeholders so they can make informed crop protection decisions for their sugarcane crops. Moving forward, May this also serve as a motivation for us to conduct further explorations, research and discussion about sugarcane in order to safeguard and strengthen this industry. With that, I wish everyone an insightful morning. Maraming salamat po at hiraya manawari. Thank you very much, Dr. Kawili. Truly, we hope for the achievement of our goals for today's webinar, especially in empowering our farmers. Ngayon naman po, we would like to invite the panelists to please turn on your video so we can have a quick photo op. Okay, ready na po. One, two, three, smile. Sa pa po. 
One, two, three, smile. Thank you, Bob. Okay, so at this point, we will proceed with the first discussion. Allow me to introduce our first resource speaker. She is a graduate of the BS Agriculture and MS Plant Pathology programs of UPLD. She has been working at the College of Agriculture and Food Science for 15 years. At present, she's a university researcher at the National Crop Protection Center, specializing in plant pathology with subspecialization in bacteriology and my mycology. Let us all lend our ears to Ms. Mary Joy M. Lapitan as she discusses fungal and bacterial diseases of sugarcane, identification and management. Ms. Joy? Hi, thank you, Ms. Charlotte, for that introduction. Magandang umaga po sa ating lahat. Ayan, let me share my screen first. Again po. Yeah, okay. So, nakikita niyo na po yung screen? Okay na, Charlotte. Yes po. Okay, so ayan, so na-assign ako to discuss the sugarcane fungal and bacterial diseases ng sugarcane. So again, I'm Mary Joy si Mendoza, napitan. Sorry, hindi ko napalitan. <laughs> Lagot ako sa asaw. Anyways, ayan, magandang umaga po muli sa ating mga um, uh, participants dito sa Zoom and sa mga nanonood po sa YouTube at sa Facebook. Okay, so I'll proceed na po sa ating um, topic ngayong umaga. Okay, I'll, I'll be discussing ito pong major fungal diseases ng sugarcane. First is yung po, uh, pokabeng, red rot, rust, downy mildew, and smut. And I'll be tackling only one uh, bacterial disease which is uh, leaf scald. Okay, so ito po yung focus ng ating discussion for this morning. So we'll just have a brief introduction of the sugarcane production sa ating bansa. And then we'll... Um, um, tackle yung mga five fungal diseases and bacterial diseases on their identification and how they are uh, 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 paano yung management strategies for these uh, diseases. Okay. okay. So, uh, itong data na ito ay nakuha po natin sa DUSD Records Industry Strategic Science and Technology Plans. And as our director uh, Dr. Kawili have said kanina that uh, sugarcane industry is very important to the Philippine economy because it contributes 70 billion sa ating pong ekonomiya no? with a total production of about 24.4 million metric tons with a total area planted uh, 399.1 uh, thousand hectares. So malaking area po talaga sa Pilipinas ang ang, ang, ang ang nagtatanim ay uh, mga sugarcane planters natin or farmers natin. Okay, so of the area na total production area natin, so ito yung data from January to March 2023, ngayong um, uh, first quarter ngayong taon na mat ang mostly ang production natin in metric tons ay nanggagaling sa Western Visaya. So andito yung, andito yung uh, Negros Occidental, yung Bacolod and um Yumaras Iloilo. So ayun, actually sa total production uh, ha, ha, more than half ay nagagaling sa sa Visayas and then 21% ay sa Mindanao and then uh, a little more than 10% sa, sa Luzon and then the, the rest ay yun uh, sa Panay Islands and other areas. Ano? So ano ba yung kagaya Kanina na nabanggit din ni Director uh, Kawili na marami challenges sa sugar production. So, low, product, uh, low productivity. no And then, uh, problema din sa milling. Ganyan. Pero kasama doon sa low productivity, 
yung pagkakaroon ng uh, pest and diseases. So, and uh, for this morning, ano, um, I'll be, as I've said kanina, I'll be tackling with the bacterial and fungal diseases. Okay, so let's proceed. So let's, let's just have a brief review of how a disease is being developed. Ano? So itong, itong uh, triangle na ito, or what we call na the disease triangle, ay may tatlong aspeto. Yung tatlong factors na ito ay importante para mag-develop ng disease. So first is yung pagkakaroon ng mabagsik na microbial work Sinas, tinatawag natin yung a virulent pathogen. And then, ang um, isang factor pa ay ang pagkakaroon ng susceptible na halaman or susceptible variety ng sugar cane. And then, third, na importante din factor talaga ay ang, ang uh, favorable environmental conditions or favorable weather conditions. Okay. So, kapag present itong tatlong ito, surely, uh, magkakaroon tayo ng uh, disease sa ating sugar cane. So, paano kumakalat itong mga a diseases na ito sa ating taniman ng tubuhan. So by wind or through rain splashes and runoff, wind-blown rain, some are uh, transmitted or spread by insects, sa na yung ating mga virus diseases. Para sa mga soil-borne diseases naman, malaking factor yung irrigation or flooding. And of course, yung yung pagkakaroon ng contaminated seeds ano, or infected planting materials for sugar cane, yung ating mga uh, cane sets. Ano? And then by... Uh, animals and then yung ating mga farm machineries, mga cutting implements, knives, pruning shears, so uh, means din yan sa pagkalat uh, ng uh, sakit. Ano? So, and we know na kapag um, na-develop na yung sakit o mataas na yung incidence or severity doon sa area na so it will result to lower quality ng ating produce, ng ating cane quality, yung sugar recovery, so maapektuhan din yun, lower quantity, and then definitely it will result to a decrease ng income ng ating mga planters, ng ating farmers. Okay, so let's proceed sa uh, fungal diseases. So mahalaga na mag tama yung ating diagnosis ano, sa mga diseases para malapatan natin ang tamang management strategy. So, Ayan. Um, first, itahal muna natin itong uh, fungal disease na caused by Fosarium, which is Pokabeng. So, um, a reported losses is about 40.65% sa production. And we can see here na we have four phases ng symptoms na observe natin kapag infected ng Pokabeng. First is the chlorotic phase 1, which we can see here yung symptom ay chlorotic patches doon sa base ng mga young leaves. So, ayan, makikita natin yung parang white patches doon sa base ng ating uh, dahon. And then, the chlorotic phase 2 involves yung um, apical shoot uh, na nagkakaroon ng distortion. And yung spindle, meron tayo makikita yung mga itim-itim or necrosis. Ano? And then, the third phase is itong pagkabulok na ng mismong apical shoot or the top rat phase. And then, um, itong knife cut face naman ay makikita natin o no, ma-observe natin sa cane mismo. Yung ether node na shorten tapos may distortion and then may makikita tayong uh, necrosis. So paano na-spread itong uh, disease na ito, fungal disease na ito? So via, excuse me, windblown rain. So kapag ang ating ding pinagsimula ng ating tanim ng ating uh, um, ano ay yung infected cane cuttings or cane sets, no? Tapos, um, isa ding na report na nakakatulong uh, sa pagkalat ng sakit na ito ay yung QPN at saka adults ng sugar cane stem borers. So, ayan. So, uh, ito yung itsura pala kapag ito'y kinukutsure sa laboratory, so sa growing media. Hindi lang ito kulay, usually kasi pag pasar yung diba ay violet na genta, yung color, ibang ibang uh, uh, culture media yung ginamit dito. And then ito yung itsura ng conidia, um, high fungal fungal structure kapag sinilip natin sa microscope. Okay. So, paano ba i-manage itong sakit na ito? First, magandang magsimula talaga um, kung mayroong available na resistant variety. Okay. And also, na yung disease-free planting materials, yung mga cane sets natin ay hindi infected. And then, if we observe yung ganitong um, this is plants na sa ating taniman ay mahalagang marug out or matanggal na natin. And kapag tinanggal natin ay hindi 
hindi uh, lang itatapon sa tab- sa sa katabi lang din ng farm natin kasi it will serve as uh, inoculum ano so yun yung magiging source nandoon yung mga spores ganyan so magandang ma um uh, baon or pagsunog okay so meron ding na uh, ano na uh, biocon agent for for this um uh, fungal species yung trichoderma and then for the ap- fungicide application naman we have the copper oxychloride okay So the second fungal disease na itatakal natin is yung tinatawag nating red rat. It is caused by several fungal species. Yung Colletotricum falcatum and then two species ng Fosarium and then uh, Glomerella tucumanensis sa ibang mga reports. So so ayan, so ang uh, distinguished ang um, char- characteristic symptom na observe natin is yung reddish spot or reddish um dito sa may midrib. Ano, may discoloration dito sa may midrib and tang elongate siya at kumapapansin din natin kapag medyo severe yung yung red spot doon sa midrib ay pero ang gray center doon sa may ayang gitna ng uh, red um, spot or red streak na and hindi lang sa dahon uh, sa midrib ng dahon mapapansin yung symptom but also when we cut yung cane ano so may discoloration tayo mapapansin dito sa may sa vascular bundle and ito yung itsura din kapag hinati natin yung cane line twice okay so ang reported yield loss is about 30 to 50 percent and uh, yung mode of spread kasi yung spores nitong fosarium uh, yan ng hole yan ay uh, nag uh, Uh, nag retain yung fosarium sa sa soil din. And then, kapag ginamit natin ang infected uh, cane sets, so, um, yun yung isa sa uh, pagkalat ng ating sakit. ano So, paano natin, paano manage itong uh, red rat disease ng sugar cane? So, kagaya ng nabanggit natin kanina, parang halos lahat naman yung importance ng paggamit ng resistant variety kapag available ito ano and then yun it yun then early screening so makita na uh, yung mga king sets ba natin or ano ay uh, may infection na ng red rat para hindi na din kumalat actually sa isang project namin with Dr. Fedelo Cueva ano yung um Um, survey sa lahat ng sugarcane areas dito sa Philippines, itong red rat ang pinaka um, uh, prevalent sa lahat ng sugarcane areas ano sa buong Pilipinas. Kasi parang halos lahat mayroon kami na pansin ng red rat. And then, maraming varieties ang affected nito. So, another um, uh, way to manage it ay yung hot water treatment. So, usually ay 50 degrees Um, Celsius na papakuluan nga sa tubig tapos for 2 to 3 hours. Ano? So may naitala din na pwedeng gamitin as biocon mga plant growth promoters like trichoderma, mga fungal species, fungal species trichoderma at saka may iba pa pero yung isa pang bacterial ano, ay Pseudomonas fluorescent. So for the fungicide application naman meron mga available na ito. Uh, Itong mga active ingredients natin, asosextrubin, defeconazole, thiophate methyl. So, ayan. Uh, the third fungal disease that we'll be tackling is the uh, sugarcane rust caused by different, actually, ano ng uh, uh, species ng poxenia. So, we have here yung melanocephal at saka kuni, yung uh, nagkukas ng brown rust at saka yung common rust ano but more or less ang symptom niya na mapapansin natin so ayan parang patchy sa uh, top view ng leaves ano so tapos kapag sinilip natin yan kapag sinilip natin yan sa ilalim yung reverse side ng leaves makikita natin yung um, mga spots or pustules na Um, ang kulay ay nag, nag-range from brown orange so mostly ay parang dark orange ganyan at nag-reddish minsan. So ayan tapos kapag uh, hinipo niyo yung ilalim na yan may bako pa sa yung powdery. So actually yun na yung spores. Kapag sinilip natin yan under the microscope ito yung itsura. Ano itong picture sa left side. So ang yield loss na i-record uh, due to this disease is 
about 10 to 43 percent. So, depende sa severity doon sa ating tanungan. So, paano i-manage ang ating uh, itong rust disease ng uh, sugar cane? So, again, yung important importansya ng uh, paggamit ng uh, disease-free planting materials, healthy planting materials, cane sets, resistant varieties, and sanitation. Ano, kasi sanitation in terms of yung mga weeds din doon sa ating uh, field. Kasi itong mga weeds na ito or other um para maging alternate host ng ating ano eh ng ating uh, rust fungus. So it is uh ensured then na pagkakaroon ng adequate supply ng water during growth period because dry uh, condition or yung 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 ganung condition sa ating taniman ay conducive for uh, spore production ng rust. So mas gusto nila yung dry. And then for the chemical application naman we have yung mga um, um, fungicides na combination ng contact at saka systemic. So we have the pyroclostrobine and epo epoxyconazole and then azosistrobine uh, and diphenoconazole. So kailangan ng systemic fungicide para ma-penetrate kasi nasa ilalim halos lahat yung, ano, yung mga post shoes karamihan. And nandun yung mga spores. So, ayan, kaya combination ng contact and systemic fungicide. And then for the fourth fungal disease, nagtatakal natin ay yung uh, SMAT. Ano, caused by sporosorium, sitanminium. So, makikita natin yung ito, ito ang distinguishing characteristic talaga ng, rock, uh, ng SMAT. So, yung whip-like structure, yung spindle ay naging itim na. Ano, so actually yung nakita nating blackening ng spindle ay uh, yun na yung spores ng smut. Okay. So kung mapapansin din natin dito ito hindi lang masyadong uh, evident kasi madaming uh, mga dahon pa ano pero ayan smut ito din sa taas. And mapapansin natin na isa pang symptom ng smut ay yung grassy shoot appearance noong, um, noong ating sugar cane. And kapag na-infect na ito at early stage, ano, so mahirap pa nang makaproduce uh, ng maayos na cane. Okay? And stunted na din yung growth. So kapag sinilap natin yung spores, ito yung itsura. Dark brown yung kanyang spores. Okay. So ang yield loss pala ay uh, mga 62%. Ano. So malaking bagay kapag um, malaking loss uh, loss ito sa production if mataas yung infestation nitong disease na ito sa sugarcane areas natin. So ayan, yung paggamit din ng uh, resistant variety. And then um, yun, rooging out of heavily inf uh, inf uh, disease uh, sugarcane. And then Mm. planting yung ating disease-free seed sets and yung practice ng hot water treatment um, ng ating mga cane sets. Ano. And then, ang, ang, ang advice ay about 40 hours, uh, 24 hours na sara ng water. Nakababad siya and then hot water is 20, uh, 50 degrees Celsius for uh, 3 hours. And then after ng hot water treatment, mahalaga din na magkaroon ng fungicide deep para maprotektahan naman yung, kasi magsasoften yung bud doon sa cane, uh, cane set natin. So mahalaga maprotektahan yun kasi vulnerable yun for, for infection. Ano? So kaya may fungicide deep yun tayo. Uh, dapat gawin. So for the last fungal disease is uh, yun downy mildew caused by paranormal pero no sclerosis para sa karay. Okay. And uh, ito ay uh, remarkable din talaga yung symptom nito dahil kapag binaligtad niyo yung dahon ay makikita tayo yung mga pulbos na kulay white. Ayun po. So actually yun yung spores ng downy mildew. So sa ilalim ng uh, dahon ng uh, uh, sugar cane. Ano? So yield loss na itala is about 40% ang production uh, losses. Ano. And then, ang isa pang symptom na mapapansin natin, may 
bukod dito sa ganitong itsura sa ilalim ng dahon is kapag severe na din, may splitting. So, ito yung tesis detailing sa IT. Yan. So, hawak niya yung isang sugar cane na, na uh, affected ng, yun nga, meron daw ni mildew na yung splitting doon sa dahon, lalo na sa may padulo ng dahon. So, mapapansin natin yun. Mataas ang ganitong klase ng daw ni mildew sa Cebu na pansin namin. So, ayan. As the, um, yung symptom ay nagpo-progress, makikita din natin noong uh, yung reddish or brownish discoloration doon sa dahon. So, yung management strategy natin, yun nga, yung pagpili talaga ng resistant variety na itatanim, then sanitation, and uh, um, this is free cane sets, and then yung marami naman tayong fungicide registered sa FPA for, for downy mildew. Ano? So, ayan. So, the last uh, disease na itatakal natin is yung bacterial disease, yung left scald. So, it is caused by Santomonas albilenians. So, papansin natin yung symptom na makikita natin kapag uh, infected ng uh, li, uh, yung ating sugar cane, yung left scald, ay yung pencil-like streaks. Okay, na makita natin dito sa photo sa taas. Ano? So, pencil-like streaks, ayan. So, from base hanggang doon sa taas ng dahon or minsan kapag ano ay nag-start doon sa base noong mga younger leaves. Okay. So, hindi lang din um, uh, chlorotic streaks ang mapapansin natin kasi pag nag-progress yan ay magiging necrotic na o magiging parang tuyong dahon. Ano. So, ganito yung itsura. And then, hindi lang din sa dahon, kundi may ma-observe din tayo yung symptom doon sa kanyang cane. So, itong mga parang spot discoloration dito. Ayan. So, isa din yan sa characteristic symptom ng lip scald. Ito yung healthy. Um, wala tayong mapapansin na discoloration, but yon yung brownish or ano, dito sa cane natin ay uh, isa sa characteristic symptom ng lip scald. Okay. Discoloration sa vascular bundle. Okay, so paano natatransmit ito? So yun, me uh, mechanical uh, transmission. So yung mga ginagamit natin, mga pruning shears or mga cutting implements. So kapag nagamit natin yung sa infected na uh, may left skull, so pwede yung, at hindi natin na-disinfect, ay mapapasa ito sa mga healthy sugar cane natin na tanim. So, Another is yung infected cane sets. Again, kapag infected na ito, so automatically yung ating mga itatanim, yung tutubong sugar cane mo ay may leaf scald na. And also mayroong study na aerial transmitted din itong ano, itong um uh, Santomonas albilenians. So um airborne din ang uh, ang ang Santomonas albilenians. Okay? Ngayon, Um, ito yung mga management strategies na pwede nating gawin. So, sa mga nabanggit natin, ano, kanina sa iba pang mga um, sugar cane diseases, yung, again, importance ng resistant variety. Kasi at, kung doon magsimula pa lang tayo ng resistant ito, maiiwasan na natin ang pagkakaroon or um, uh, yung, yung incidence ng sakit. And then yung hot water treatment, ang, ang advice na hot water treatment ay before performing this HWT ay meron mo ng soaking ng, ng, ng cane sets sa running water ng, for 40 hours tapos um, 50 degrees for 2 to 3 hours na hot water treatment. Tapos... Ayan, yung disinfecting ng, ng mga tools na ginagamit, so mahalaga po yun. And, and uh, pag uh, rubbed out ng mga infected uh, sugar cane na, na meron ng lip scald. And also we have this na sa lactic acid bacteria, pwede din siyang magamit. May nakita tayong study na pwede ito. Um, uh, streptomycin plus tetracycline. So at two-week intervals ay... Uh, promising results then ang 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 base doon sa nabasa ko na na study and then yun yung kahalagahan ng strict strict quarantine regulation hindi lang din sa bacterial disease but for all the diseases ng sugar cane so what do we mean by yung strict quarantine regulation hindi talaga natin um 
ina-advise or uh, pinopromote yung uh, illegal na pag um, pagdala ng mga king varieties galing ibang bansa dito sa Pilipinas ang hindi dumadaan sa quarantine process natin dito sa Pilipinas ano so ayan mahalaga na sumunod sa uh, sa quarantine regulation natin okay para maiwasan ang pagkalat pa itong mga diseases na ito sa iba't ibang area uh, sugarcane areas dito sa ating bansa so yun lang po sana ay meron po kayong natutunan sa ating pong topic ngayong umaga maraming salamat Okay, thank you very much, Ms. Joy, for that discussion on fungal and bacterial diseases of sugar cane. So Ms. Joy has provided us with information on how to identify these diseases, ano nga ba yung yield loss na dulot ng mga ito, and of course, paano ito manage. Now, from fungal and bacterial diseases, we move on to the diseases caused by viruses and nematodes. Our next speaker specializes in plant pathology and in particular phytonematology and plant virology. She received her BS Agriculture and MS Plant Pathology degrees from UPLB and her PhD in International Agricultural Development major in plant virology from the Tokyo University of Agriculture. She has worked at the International Rice Research Institute and the College of Agriculture and Food Science of UPLB, particularly the Department of Plant Pathology, the Institute of Plant Breeding, and now the National Crop Protection Center, where she serves as university researcher and heads the center's pest management division. Let us give a warm welcome to Dr. Marita Espini. Okay, good morning, everyone. So... Mag-share lang po muna ako. Okay na po? Yes po. Okay, good morning once again. And thank you, Ms. Joy, for sharing about the identification and management of fungal and uh, bacterial diseases. So this time, uh, dadagdagan ko lang yung... Uh, uh, discussion about diseases of sugar cane, so for viruses and nematodes. You will notice medyo maunti ang, ang reports or even yung mga ongoing studies about uh, viruses and nematodes on sugar cane. So I just prepared a, a few slides but uh, a lot of information. Sana na may makuha kayo. Marami-raming marami information. So to start with, um, So my presentation contains the following. So I will start with a short introduction, but this time on the impact, impact of uh, sugarcane diseases. And then I will go straight to selected uh, major virus diseases of sugarcane and then um, discuss a little about the uh, how to manage these uh, viral diseases. And then followed by um, diseases caused by nematodes and its management. So, medyo dagdagan ko lang yung figures na na been recent ni Miss uh, sorry. Been recent ni uh, Miss Joy kanina. So, uh, we as we all know that uh, sugarcane is considered the most important uh, sugar and energy crop. It is also high in biomass and uh, it belongs to the C4 C4 crop. So among the agricultural um, crops produced globally, I think sugarcane siya yung may pinakamalaking production. In fact, it has an annual uh, production of 1.9 billion tons and 40% uh, is uh, being shared by Brazil. So from this 1.9 billion tons production, uh, it can share 79% of uh, the global sugar production. So, napakalaki, no? And 70% uh, of the actual sugar production comes from uh, the saccharum officinarum or yung mismong sugar cane and its hybrids. And then the rest eh, ay galing sa sugar beet. Okay? 
So the main product of uh, sugar cane is uh, sucrose or our table sugar. So it's the product extracted from sugar cane. So sucrose, I think, is one of the most versatile ingredients sa ating mga pagkain. Ano? In terms of uh, nutritional value, so sugar cane can uh, give us 58 kilocalories per 100 gram freshly squeezed uh, juice. It's also a good source of carbohydrates, fat, and uh, proteins. Uh, sugar cane also um, contains or contributes on the uh, good source of vitamins, particularly B6, uh, B9, or eufolate, and even vitamin C. It is also high in uh, potassium, uh, phosphorus, calcium, and magnesium, and a small amount of iron, sodium, and uh, zinc. So aside from uh, sucrose as the main product of sugar cane, uh, it is also a primary source of uh, many of our industrial materials. In fact, 60% uh, of our global production of bioethanol came from sugar cane. And aside from that, you press cane juice, uh, we can use it to produce diesel, jet fuel, and other high-value products. And then yung mga byproducts naman, it can be used for direct fired uh, power generation, yung ating mga fertilizers, and uh, as a culture substrate for uh, fruit tree seedlings. Okay, in terms of diseases, uh, you will notice that there are more fungal and bacterial uh, diseases than um, those caused by viruses and nematodes. However, virus diseases are considered the world's most important sugar cane diseases, uh, causing remarkable epidemics and major yield losses. Uh, in fact, uh, in every breeding programs worldwide, uh, lagi kinukonsider yung breeding for virus resistance simply because it's actually very difficult to produce a virus-free uh, variety or planting materials because it will take time, a lot of uh, resources and effort. No? So diseases like um, uh, viral diseases as well as uh, caused by nematodes, it can incur higher cost of production, uh, particularly in the crop management. So this is because we want to minimize its impact on the quality, yield, and even on sucrose content. So I'll go straight with the uh, major viral disease of sugar cane. Sugar cane. Actually, I just picked one major uh, viral disease na present uh, sa Pilipinas. No? So, ito yung mosaic uh, disease. So, mosaic disease is the main viral uh, sugarcane diseases. And I think this is one of the oldest ever identified uh, disease ng sugarcane. So it was, it was first described in Java in 1892 as yellow stripe disease. But there are speculations that the mosaic disease is actually originated from New Guinea. And then it was only introduced uh, into Java uh, through uh, infected uh, sugarcane. And then it spread all throughout in the in the Americas and to other countries. So the disease directly affect the photosynthesis and uh, growth of sugar cane, thus can decrease the cane yield and sugar content. Um, there are reports that, uh, that, the, that the disease could cause 10 to 50% or even 6 to 80% 80 uh, yield losses. So mosaic disease is uh, actually uh, a single or compound systemic infection of uh, these viruses. So we have the sugarcane mosaic virus, the sorghum mosaic virus, and um, or sugarcane strict mosaic virus. So and daming, ano, no, and daming virus na involved. But uh, before the 1990s, um, scientists agreed that 
the cause of mosaic disease is due to the sugarcane mosaic virus. So since then, um, the sorghum mosaic virus and the sugarcane streak mosaic virus are independently classified as the new uh, mosaic causing viral species by the International Committee on um, Taxonomy of uh, Viruses or the ICTV. Uh, this is based on the uh, molecular characteristic. But uh, more recently, um, there are reports, actually frequent reports that um, mosaic disease is caused by a compound infection of uh, combination or with different combination of these three uh, viruses. So what are the associated uh, viruses with mosaic disease? As I've mentioned, we have the SCMB, SRMB, and the SCSMB. So these three uh, viruses are, they are all belong to one family, which is the Potibiridae. So in Potibiridae, these are non-enveloped, plexus uh, filamented and positive single-stranded RNA. About uh, the size is about seven kilobase pair. And then these three viruses only differ in terms of the variant size, inactivation temperature, and in vitro survival time um, based on their basic pathogenic uh, characteristics. So the sugarcane mosaic virus and the sorghum mosaic virus are actually both potivirus, whereas the sugarcane streak virus belongs to the Powassi virus. So these first two viruses are actually uh, distributed worldwide, whereas the SCSMB uh, mainly exists in Asia, so like uh, Bangladesh, China, Indonesia, Vietnam, and others. So in terms of symptoms, so the symptoms caused by the three uh, viruses are actually uh, similar. So especially in the middle and uh, lower, middle and lower uh, sections of new leaves. So compared with the healthy uh, leaves, there are many um, irregular yellow and green inlays, yeah. stripes or mottles alternate with uh, the parallel veins. So it, these symptoms are more visible against, uh, if you view it against the light, okay? So some, um, some symptomatic plants shows uh, just a normal green with uh, only few yellow uh, pale streaks. Some show very obvious uh, lip chlorosis, and in a severe case, um, infected leaves turn yellow or yellow-white. So the primary source of uh, infection is actually uh, from the infected plants of sugarcane and other graminae hosts. And in nature, uh, the transmission of uh, sugarcane mosaic virus and the sorghum mosaic virus are vectored by as vectored by aphids, uh, particularly the Rupalosipomyces, uh, in a non-persistent manner. However, in the case of the sugarcane strict mosaic virus, uh, we don't have uh, confirmed reports yet if it is uh, seed-borne. Ah, no, no, if it is. Uh, vectored by uh, insects. Although in other groups of Powassi virus showing similar or high similarity with SCSMB, uh, meron silang na-identify na insect vector which is the wheat curl mites. Okay, But in the case of the SCA, uh, sugarcane mosaic strict virus infecting um, sugarcane, uh, wala pang known uh, insect vector. Okay, so for the other host of uh, sugarcane mosaic viruses can infect corn, sorghum, and several species of weeds, in particular the St. Augustine grass. But aside from the 
uh, Graminaceae or sa grass family. Um, you can also find uh, sugarcane mosaic virus in particular in Musa, so like abaca and even uh, species of cucurbits. So these viruses are easily transmitted over short distance via farm machineries, uh, harvesting tools or mga cutting uh, tools, and even yung fluid um, or yung sap if it, if it has a contact with uh, from plant to plant and also through a fence. But the long distance uh, transmission uh, is via infected sugarcane. So if you have the infected sugarcane stalks, so mas mabilis na matatransfer or matatransmit yung um, uh, virus, yung mosaic disease. So the severity of uh, the sugar, uh, the mosaic disease in sugarcane field is actually closely associated with uh, the variety, infected sets, of course, climatic conditions, and the intermediate host. So basically, young sugarcane plants are more susceptible than uh, the older or mature plants. And then in terms of climatic condition, uh, drought and less um, rainfall are actually beneficial to the reproduction and activities of aphids, which promotes spread of uh, mosaic. And also, a uh, serious occurrence ng mosaic is uh, commonly observed in weedy and uh, intercropping sugarcane fields. And those uh, areas where they are practicing yung long-term rotation, and planting of uh, just a single variety. So these factors can lead to a very serious epidemic of the mosaic disease. So with that, so what are the practical and effective management practices for these virus diseases? So number one is the utilization of uh, resistant germplasm. So meaning uh, selection and uh, rational distribution of disease-resistant varieties. This is the most economic and effective prevention and control measures against uh, these viruses. So in developing uh, resistant varieties, uh, there should be um, acceleration of uh, molecular marker assisted breeding and even genetic engineering. So this will help promote the development of uh, resistant varieties. The second one is uh, application of virus free planting materials. So this can be done through tissue culture. As we all know, tissue culture can eliminate or lessen or slow down the incidence of mosaic. But can also, aside from that, it can also increase the sucrose content by 0.5% uh, and can yield by 20 to 40%. So other practices that, that could ensure virus pre-planting materials is through um, hot water treatment. So yun yung very popular, aerated steam therapy, and even uh, ultra low uh, temperature uh, therapy. And then if we don't have that type of technologies, uh, one of the most practical ways is to select um, sets or yung planting materials from the healthy um, sugarcane fields because these viruses are set born. Okay, so the third and uh, last management practices has something to do with the good field management. So sanitation is very important. We have to do timely removal of infected sugarcane plants as well as removal of uh, weeds or potential alternate hosts. And then we can apply uh, chemical or biological control to eliminate the potential vectors, okay? And aside from that, we have to strengthen the cultivation practices by improving the soil structure, application of recommended uh, fertilizer, and of course, proper irrigation. And lastly, we can do, what we can do is to fortify cropping system. So in this case, we can introduce um, 
crop rotation of uh, non-host crops, including soybean, uh, sweet potato, and peanuts. Okay, so for the plant parasitic nematodes, um, just uh, a little review what are plant parasitic nematodes. No, so these are soil-borne uh, microscopic organisms, some multicellular organism that uh, invade plant tissues. So the plant parasitic nematodes are widely distributed in sugarcane growing soils with an estimated uh, number of species of five in every uh, field. So the population uh, abundance and even proportion of species actually vary in every soil type, climate, and crop history. So just to have a deeper understanding about these plant parasitic nematodes, um, this group of nematodes actually classified into three according to their feeding habits. So we have the ectoparasitic nematodes, so those nematodes that uh, feed on um, their plant uh, tissues just by inserting their long stylet, okay? The other one is the semi-endoparasitic, this one. So when you say semi-endoparasitic, uh, it can penetrate not only the stylet, but the uh, upper or the head region, you know, first a uh, few uh, portion of the anterior uh, body region. The other one ay yung endoparasitic nematodes. So it's further classified into migratory and sedentary. So when you say migratory, um, it can penetrate inside the host cells and then it can move from one cell to another cell. And it can create uh, tunnels inside the host tissues. The other one, migratory, is once na nakapenetrate sa loob, uh, magstay na siya doon all throughout its life cycle, lalong lalo na yung female, and then uh, it will establish its uh, uh, nurse cells or yung kanyang feeding sites all throughout the life cycle, and then can produce uh, numerous um, eggs. So the typical symptom caused by nematodes are short, thickened, and blackened primary roots with very fine uh, secondary or tertiary roots. So yield loss um, across the sugar cane are estimated as high as 10% per plant and 7% per ratoon. So in sugar cane, there are only two important uh, species of nematodes. So we have the meloidogyne or the root knot nematode. This um, species of nematode are capable of producing giant cells. So, so giant cells is, are produced by uh, hypertrophy or, and hyperplasia. It makes it behead, increase in cell size and um, cell number. So resulting to root knot symptoms. And the other one is the root lesion nematode. So in particular, the Pratilenchus species. So it can cause severe root lesion and later on develop uh, in dark and rat tissue cavities, which eventually lead to death and decay of host tissues. So other reported species infecting um, sugarcane are ectoparasitic nematodes, such as the Cipinema or the Dagger nematode and uh, Helicotyl ankles or the spiral nematode. Okay, as for the root knot nematode, so it's a sedentary, as I explained uh, in the <clears throat> earlier slides, it's a sedentary endoparasitic nematode. It's parthenogenetic, so hindi niya kailangan yung male nematodes to produce offspring. And in sugarcane, there are several species of meloidogyne associated. No? It includes the meloidogyne in cognita. And then Meloidogyne actually has a wide host range of all the nematodes uh, species. So it can infect weeds and other perennial and annual crops. 
So in the sugarcane field, you can find meloidogyne mainly in lighter and sandy soils. So as you can see here, ito yung mga prominent or apparent symptoms niya, yung root knot. Okay. So ito yung eggs. This is the infective juvenile penetrating the root tissue. And once na nandun na siya sa loob, magde-develop na siya into adult, female, and then to produce its uh, nurse cells and a source of its uh, nutrition. No? Then ito yung X. Okay? As for the Pratilenkus species or the lesion nematode, so yung... Uh, Meloidogyne is a sedentary, but this one, ito naman ay migratory. So migratory and the parasitic nematode, it creates tunnels. So leaving brown to black cavities on the tissues. So outside, it can produce many red lesions, yan, doon sa surface. So it's also part, you know, genetic, and it can be found actually in every cane growing type of soil. Okay. So as for the management, so crop monitoring is the most important. So crop monitoring, you can do a soil test since yung nematodes ay soil born to confirm what are the species present in the soil before planting and then refer to the threshold level. So I found uh, one uh, study guide on... Uh, nematodes of uh, sugarcane, uh, meron na silang identified threshold level for meloidogyne and pratelenkus. So for the meloidogyne, 200 individuals of nematodes per plant and during the first ratoon. But if it is older ratoon, so um, medyo mas malaking population ng meloidogyne, about 600 plus to uh, so that you can translate it into yield loss. Yan. And then sa Pratilenkus, 300 for plant and then for the first ratoon and then 900 plus for the older ratoons. Then another management uh, practice is you have to avoid flow, flow out. So ibig sabihin yung mga remnants na mga tanim, kailangan tatanggalin and then if possible, kailangan mag-replant. Another thing is uh, related to sanitation, no? harvest plow out blocks early to give a maximum break before planting other crops. If possible, I like yung nose crops. Then ensure follow crop are kept, follow meaning yung irres mo yung area free from other uh, plants or crops, so particularly pre of weeds and volunteer cane. So this is to avoid build up of um, root knot nematode and root lesion nematodes. Another thing that I encountered in the guide is actually uh, the use of green cane trash blanket. So instead of burning yung mga leftovers or yung mga trashes uh, produced during harvesting, uh, hinahayaan lang siya sa field as uh, trash blanket. So it will encourage uh, yung moisture and um, uh, reproduction of beneficial uh, nematodes, okay, mga predatory nematodes. And then uh, related to the green cane trash blanket is you have to practice minimum tillage because uh, minimum tillage will um, prevent the um, actually, para hindi mawala din yung nakalagay na trash blanket. And then to prevent um, build up of uh, plant parasitic nematodes. Okay. The other one is can also use registered uh, chemical nematicide. So basically, uh, ang nakita ko lang na registered uh, nematicide so far are yung mga phenomipos. Okay or we call it uh, yung brand name, um, Nemacor, yung nasa list. Okay, I think this is the end. So I just want to um, recognize yung mga references na ginamit for this presentation. 
And of course, if you have question, you may contact me with this, with the following um, contact information. And that's it. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Pinili. We've established no, the importance of sugarcane as source of sugar, nutrition, and industrial materials. And we've also learned about mosaic diseases and plant parasitic nematodes that affect sugarcane and how we can manage them. So thank you once again sa ating mga speakers for today. And at this point, tayo na po ay dadako sa ating open forum. So we are opening up the floor to your questions. Once again, if you are here on Zoom, please use the Q&A tab. If you are watching on Facebook and YouTube, you may use the comment section. And our speakers will try to address your questions. Now to facilitate our open forum, I would like to call on another researcher and plant pathologist from the National Crop Protection Center, Ms. Sarah Jane Manaday. Thank you, Ms. Char. And, um, and good morning po sa ating lahat. As mentioned by Ms. Char, ako po ang magmamoderate na ating question and answer portion this morning. First of all, uh, I would like to thank our speakers, uh, Ms. Mary Chairman Bozal Lapitan and Doc Marie for the uh, informative presentation. So, um, meron na po ba tayong mga katanungan? So, I believe... Uh, very informative yung presentation and marami tayong natutunan. And yet, I'm sure mayroon po tayong mga gustong i-clarify no? sa ating mga... Uh, um, so, ayun. So, mayroon po tayong... First question po siguro, uh, walang particular na ano, tinutukan ko yung sinong speaker, but uh, alin po sa mga diseases ang uh, pinaka-prevalent ngayon sa bansa? Either si, either po sa ating <laughs> dalawang speakers. <laughs> Kasi pag tiyanong mo virologist, sabihin ko plant viruses. <laughs> Prevalence sa ating bansa. Actually, mawa ko lang mauna po, no? There we go. Okay. Kung in terms of prevalence, base doon mong saan na natin, dati nating involvement sa project, no? Yung emerging and the emerging. So, yung four fungal diseases, yung um, red rat, pokabeng, um, downy mildew, at saka, ito pa isa ba? Smat. Lip scald. Uh -uh. Ah, so five, yung bacteria, mm -hmm. lip scald, no? Medyo minor lang yung, um, actually nasa minor siya yung lip scald, pero anyways. Pero kahapon sa report namin, ay sa report, sa meeting namin, may isa kasi kasi kasama na sugarcane planter sa Batangas. May, meron siyang na banggit doon sa meeting na meron daw parang outbreak hindi pa naman outbreak siguro yung ano pero may may problema sila sa apat na diseases ngayon so ang nabanggit niya na diseases ay mosaic mam hindi ko pa po pala yes. na sabi sa iyo mosaic mm -hmm. tapos asthma daw dm or downy mildew and yung isa ay may mold spot ano siya apat yun Wait lang po. Ayan, habang hinahanap ko. Sige, mamari baka may dadagdag ka. Okay. So, yung na-mention niya, yung mosaic disease, actually, hindi lang sa sugar cane. Actually, halos lahat <laughs> ng crops. Ano, may mosaic even corn. O, yung mga nasa sipor uh, group ng crops. So, very prevalent ang um, uh, mosaic diseases. Nakita ko na po, rust. Medyo ah. problematic daw sila ngayon din sa rust. Okay. And so, thank you, Miss Joy, for that uh, in, um, uh, answer. So, kanina nabanggit po ni Miss Joy na that monitoring is also important in uh, managing diseases. No? So, meron po tayong katanungan dito. Are there methods po for farmers to be able to monitor nematodes on sugar cane? So, I think uh, for Doc Maripoy. 
Okay, for nematode monitoring, so if it is pre-plant, ibig sabihin kung wala pang tanim sa field, you can send us yung soil sample. Yun lang naman ang, ano eh, ang, ang immediate test for nematode. Pero kung may mga tanim na siya, you can check also yung, uh, of course, kasi yung symptoms niya is basically ano eh, uh, below ground. So you can check yung mag-soil mag sample lang kayo and even a portion of roots per plant. Kung nakikita nyo yung halaman na naninilaw, nababansot, so it's then one of the indicators na possible na infected siya ng nematode. So you have to do a root and a soil sampling. But if you cannot identify, you can send us yung samples po. Uh, so we can do it uh, for you. Yeah, thank you. So I hope nakuha po yung sagot ni ma'am. So next question po natin is uh, asked by by Mr. Joel. Um, mapaano po maiiwasan ng mga disease sa ating mga sugar cane? So I think it has something to do with prevention. Itong kanya, ano, how do we prevent in general? Um, either kahit sino pa <laughs> oh, sige ako na kasi depende yan sa case ano so as you've learned napaka apat yung groups ng pathogens na uh, diniscuss natin no for uh, virus diseases um, of course it is set born so as I've mentioned so you have para ma-prevent yung uh, spread or occurrence ng uh, mosaic diseases is you have to secure uh, virus-free or healthy sets before planting. So, ibig sabihin, uh, wag ka nang, as much as possible, wag ka nang kumuha doon sa areas na uh, nakita mo na yung sakit. Parang yung mag-uulit ka ng pananim. No? You have to uh, replant new ones. No? And for the nematodes, kasi nga siya ay soil-born. So, yung monitoring, as I've mentioned, yung Crop monitoring yung number one to prevent. Yun lang. Talagang sanitation and uh, securing clean planting materials pa rin ang yung immediate uh, uh, action or measure to prevent those uh, diseases. And yun ma'am, yung paggamit din po talaga ng mga resistant varieties na no, kung available for that particular disease kung meron sila specific na ina-address. Ah uh, yes kasi sa Pilipinas ano nag-check din ako kung mayroong available resistant varieties especially for viruses. Ah uh, wala pa akong na-encounter ano lalo na sa sa nemato. So I don't know for the fungal and bacterial diseases kung may recent ano na siya uh, resistant varieties. Actually related yata yung tanong ni basahin okay lang ba Sarah? kay Ma'am Lut Francisco na yung kung ano daw mayroon ba tayong mga varieties na sugar cane varieties na may resistance to fungal, bacterial and viral diseases kundi lahat na ni Ma'am Dead. And alam ko po may list ang ang meron kasi tayong filsorin tama ba mo ano? No. Um, and then alam ko sa IPB din may list din sila or may mga initial study na sila kasi kung ano yung mga varieties na resistance sa ganitong particular disease. So, probably ay yung pwede tayong makipag-coordinate doon po sa mga agencies po na yun. Thank you so much, Ms. Joy. Uh, nasagot na po isang tanong kung may mga recent varieties na po dito sa Philippines. And um, ito po ang uh, follow-up questions kay Doc Marie. Ma'am, paano daw po yung uh, proper sampling procedures for soil sample ng ating pernamatos? Ano po oh. yung... Okay, so <clears throat> may, there are techniques talaga for soil sampling. You know? Hindi pwedeng basta na lang kumuha ng soil samples. You have to consider yung una, yung area. Ano yung, for, of course, for sugar cane. So kung ito ay pre-plant, so you have to, yung area mo must be uh, well uh, represented for proper assessment ng nematode. So we normally use yung zigzag pattern or we if masyadong malaki yung area, uh, we divide it into four quadrants and then per quadrant doon kami kumukuha ng uh, subsamples. And then how deep? So depende doon sa depth ng root system and then what else? Um yun and then 
uh, para hindi masyadong bulky yung soil samples, uh, we do composite sampling. Ibig sabihin, ibimix mo yung soil samples, then you get the representative. But ma'am, if you're interested, I could send you yung talagang uh, proper sampling procedures for soil and even uh, roots for nematode identification for, for sugar cane. Thank you. Thank you. If you want to uh, reach out to you, Doc, uh, you can ask for her email po directly. Okay lang ba yun, ma'am? Uh, yes, okay. sure, sure. If you want to, to uh, reach out po kay Doc Marie. So, um, ito naman pong next question natin ay from Phil Serene, from Anonymous uh, Attendee. How about, ma'am, yung leaf score, should yellow spot, and red spot, this is sugar cane po. Do you have any management practice for this? So I think yung iba po na mention ni, ni Ms. Joy kanina, but yung, uh, maybe she can clarify more on this uh, diseases po. Oh, Ayan, thank you po for the question. Kasi hindi natin naisama yung this, sa discussion yung sa leaf, leaf scorch at iba pong mga foliar diseases. Ano. So for the leaf scorch, actually kasama siya sa dating ng project po namin. Pero isang recommendation na, ah, isang study na ginawa is yung proper nutrition. Ah, nakatulong siya to um de decrease yung uh, incidence yung severity actually ng leaf scorch so and with, with the other foliar diseases so uh, hindi ko lang sure no kung may mga uh, registered fungicides for 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 mamari may alam ko po ba for ice spot hindi pa ako masyadong familiar doon sa sa uh, foliar uh, fungal disease na iyon no so may merong insight ka po ba doon Yeah, Actually, when it comes to ano yung recommendation for fungicides, um, uh, ang, ang rule ko jan is you have to identify first kung ano talaga yung pathogen na nagkakos, and then I check with the, with actually with the company, uh, kung ano yung recommended, kasi sila may mga ano na dun, eh, may mga trials na regarding don sa effect ng fungicide. But we can check uh, if you want the ano yung specific uh, fungicides or anong AI ang specific for that particular disease. We can check po and then we'll get back to you po or email po namin sa inyo. Tapos, tapos nabagit naman natin kanina yung management ng sa red rat. Ano? So, siguro i-run through ko lang din para at least, ayun ma, uh, recall din. No? So, ang yun din, kagaya na sabi ni Mama Marisa, actually sa kahit anong ano diseases naman, mahalaga na magsimula tayo sa healthy planting materials, mga healthy cane sets natin, kung mare from tissue culture, ganyan. And then yung hot water treatment, so effective din siya for uh, addressing itong red rat. Ano po, yung uh, at 50 degrees Celsius ng uh, for 3 hours. Yes. So yung pag HWT sa ating mga cane sets before planting. So, ayun po. Thank you, Ms. Joy. Um, and Doc Marie, so yung next question po natin has something to do with uh, kung uh, meron bang seasonal infestation itong mga diseases na to dito sa Philippines. Like, kung pag, I think, pag kind of it is. Kung meron bang mga diseases na mas prevalent or kapag tag um, Okay, uh, na-mention ko kanina doon sa presentation, no? so when it comes to mosaic diseases, mas favorable siya during uh, dry months, drought, and uh, less rainfall. Bakit? Kasi it can favor yung reproduction activities ng insect vector. So mas malaki yung chance na mas mataas yung incidence ng mosaic diseases. I think yung iba pong mga questions ay, ay yung iba lang ay nangihingi lang po ng uh, proper procedures for sampling ng nematodes. Okay. Si Dr. Marina pong bahala dyan. Sa pagbigay ng sampling methods. And um, let me see. Meron ba po tayong mga clarifications? Mm. Okay. Sa atin pong mga viewers, sa ating mga participants sa Zoom, baka meron pong gustong magtaas ng 
kamay. Just use the raised hand sa ating bottom na part ng Zoom para i-raise niyo po yung inyong mga concerns habang nandito po ang ating reading reading sumagot ang ating mga uh, speakers this morning. Ayan. And um, let's check lang po so pang nag-iisip pa sila ma'am ng mga katanungan um siguro ah uh, excuse yes pa okay. ah uh, dun po sa mga may kailangan ng for example sampling protocol or anything about uh, nematodes and viruses paki ano na lang po ng inyong email address para ano po masagot ko po kayo paki send na lang po So, siguro itong tanong na to is from me uh, just to clarify doon sa ating mga viewers niya para lang bigyan sila ng idea ha? how do we distinguish yung different pathogen groups when it comes to uh, monitoring and when it comes to identification in the field. So, ano po yung major uh, difference among these pathogen groups when it comes to uh, field distribution? Say, alin po dito yung pathogen group yung mas nag-aggregate and alin dito yung mas randomly uh, distributed sa field pag Nagmamonitor po tayo. Okay. So sa nematodes, actually, siya yung aggregated. Kasi if you look at yung, ano, take note of the movement ng nematodes, napakabagal nila, di ba? So even sa field, lalo na sa field, aggregated talaga sila. So it, it uh, shows a patchy uh, pattern sa, sa field. So pag viruses naman, so since it is, Uh, vectored by uh, insects. So, kung nasa yung source ng inoculum, so mas mabilis siyang mag-spread. I think for bacteria, may pa may pattern din yan. And then fungal diseases. Di ba, Joy? Yes, po. Pero actually, yun nga din, kagaya na din, kagaya din nabagit ni ma'am, kung nasa yung uh, source of inoculum. Pero more of kapag mga fungal diseases, kasi may presence ng spores, conidia, ganyan. So, more or less, um, Um, medyo hindi, hindi siya aggregated pero paano ko ba i-describe siya? <laughs> Parang halos lahat in time, no? So, ma-cover niya yung buong field. Pero kapag mga bacterial diseases, um, depende din kasi kung soil-borne siya or, or kung paano yung transmission. So, depende sa mode of transmission noong disease natin. Eh. So, malalaman ma ma natin kung ano yung uh, distribution doon sa field. So, ayun po. So, um, thank you po uh, sa ating speakers for that clarification. At least yung mga viewers natin, may bigyan sila ng mga idea how to will distinguish. Kasi diba minsan talagang challenging yung identify ng mga ng mga diseases, lalo na kapag hindi ka ganun ka-familiar sa behavior nila sa field. So, at least they are given a uh, Uh, informa uh, basic information on, on, on those things. And so, meron pa po ba tayong mga clarifications? Meron pa po tayong mga questions? Hanggang ano oras? Ayan, so, if wala na po kayong mga questions, uh, sure na po walang questions. Ayan, so, ibabalik ko na po sa ating um, boost, ang aking ang, ang floor. Ayan. So thank you so much po sa lahat ng nag-participate. Thank you sa mga concerns and raise. And I hope na lahat po tayo ay may natutunan this morning. And thank you so much sa ating pong speakers. And thank you very much po, Miss Sarah. And thank you din po sa ating speakers for answering the questions of our participants. And of course, salamat po sa ating very active na participants this morning. Okay, so we now proceed to the awarding of the Certificate of Appreciation to our speakers. Okay, allow me to read the citation. National Crop Protection Center, College of Agriculture and Food Science, University of the Philippines, Los Baños. Certificate of Appreciation is awarded to Mary Joy M. Lapitan for serving as resource person on the topic Fungal and Bacterial Diseases of Sugarcane Identification and Management during the NCPC webinar on the management of sugarcane diseases held on 30 August 2023 via Zoom. Given this 30th day of August 2023 at the National Crop Protection Center, College of Agriculture and Food Science, 
University of the Philippines, Los Banos, Los Banos, Laguna, Philippines. Signed by yours truly, Chair of the NCPC Seminar Series Committee and Dr. Barbara L. Kawili, NCPC Director. Thank you very much, Ms. Joy. Thank you very much, Ninpo. Certificate of Appreciation is also awarded to Dr. Marita S. Inili for serving as resource person on the topic Diseases of Sugarcane Caused by Viruses and Nematodes during the NCPC webinar on the management of sugarcane diseases held on 30 August 2023 via Zoom. Given this 30th day of August 2023 at the National Crop Protection Center, College of Agriculture and Food Science, University of the Philippines, Los Banos, Los Banos, Laguna, Philippines. Signed by yours truly, Chair of the NCPC Seminar Series Committee, and Dr. Barbara L. Kavili, NCPC Director. Thank you very much, Ma'am Marie. And of course, di po mawawalan ng certificate ang ating attendees ngayong umaga. So for the certificate of attendance, please answer the evaluation form at bit.ly slash ncpcws23-2 eval until bukas po, 5 p.m. And uh, please expect the certificate to be sent to your email within the week. Okay, so. At this juncture, I would like to call on the head of the NCPC Technical Support and Advisory Services Program, Mr. Randolph N. Candano, to give us the closing remarks. Thank you, Charlotte. Uh, first and foremost, I would like to express my appreciation to our speakers, Dr. Marita Pinili and uh, Ms. Merajoy Mendoza Lapitan, and uh, to the seminar committee headed by our today's MC, Ms. Charlotte Agosohos. Also, my uh, deepest gratitude goes to all who attended this webinar and helped make it such a, a successful event. The uh, National Crop Protection Center stands as a primary institution for research, development, and extension as part of the University of the Philippines Los Baños' serious efforts in uh, promoting the country's food security and agricultural sustainability through an effective pest management program. Remember that our commitment to uh, sustainable agriculture requires continuous learning and uh, hopefully the insights that we gain today will be transformed into actionable steps that will safeguard our sugarcane industry. It is important to uh, regularly get updates from our experts and hearing and learning from our speakers this morning has educated me and for sure all of us here on how to properly manage sugarcane diseases. I hope it has helped everyone to have a better grasp of the major constraints to sugarcane production, which is a complex of diseases caused by pathogenic bacteria, fungi, and viruses, and also nematodes, so we can collaborate and collectively work towards mitigating the impact of these diseases. And before ending my closing remarks, again, I would like to convey a special thanks to our speakers, Dr. Marita Pinili and Ms. Merajoy Mendoza-Lapitan. Finally, my deepest thanks are, of course, reserved for the NCPC Seminar Series Committee, chaired by Ms. Charlotte Hagosohos, for their contributions and for running this event smoothly. Thank you, everyone, and have a great day. Back to you, Chair. Thank you very much, Sir Randy, for your closing message. So that ends our webinar for today. Manatili po kayong updated sa mga susunod pa naming activities by following us on Facebook, visiting our website, and subscribing to our YouTube channel. Once again, thank you very much, and may we all have a great day ahead.